Thank you all for joining. Um, this is going to be a demonstration overview of the Hathi Trust Research Center, and we have with us Eleanor Cole from HTRC to demo. And this is going to be uh, recorded. So if for any reason you have to leave or you had colleagues that couldn't make it, we will make the recording available at a later date. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and mute and turn my own camera off. And Eleanor, you can go ahead and get started. And thank you so much for joining us today. So I'm gonna be talking about um, HathiTrust text data, um, mostly through the lens of the HathiTrust Research Center, but also just touching on the HathiTrust Digital Library generally um, and the data that the digital library makes available. Uh, so HathiTrust is a large scale digital library and I'll be going into what's um, in the digital library that might be helpful um, in terms of thinking about the library as a source of text. But here's just one quick example off the top of a project that came out of the University of California. Um, Zach Bleemer is, I believe, still an um, economics PhD student at Berkeley, and he worked on this project um, called the uh, University of California Climetric History Project. And he was asking the question about what can student data stored in historical documents tell us about higher education in California, specifically whether there were um, any impacts that could be assessed um, as to how the universities contributed to the growth, health, economic mobility, or equity in the communities and states from which um, California um, college students came. And they focused primarily on the University of California. This was a UC project, but they did some comparative work as well um, with Stanford and other schools in California. And this project is particularly interesting uh, because of the novel ways that they explored how to pull data from um, historic um, uh, university uh, catalogs um, that sort of looks like the image on the left where you can see it's in this tabular format um, but wouldn't OCR really well into um, this nice dashboard visualization that you can see the screenshot of on the right. Um, that was one of their uh, big uh, research contributions was developing some methods for pulling the data out in a more usable format. So you may be familiar with HathiTrust, um, but if not, I'll do a very quick overview of what it is. Uh, HathiTrust is a nonprofit academic partnership. There are more than 160 member libraries, uh, mostly in the US and Canada, although there is a growing number of um, members from outside of North America. And HathiTrust has a mission of supporting teaching, learning, and scholarship. Um, it's unique from other organizations that your library um, might subscribe to databases for like JSTOR or ProQuest in the sense that it is a demonstration of library cooperation. So HathiTrust really um, strives to be collaborative with the um, member libraries and member libraries contribute back to HathiTrust in a number of ways. Um, one thing that's important to consider when thinking about the digital library as a source for text data is that it was built through a process of mass digitization. So this means that someone was going into uh, these large academic research libraries primarily, pulling materials off shelves and scanning them and sort of you miss that uh, item by item curatorial focus when you uh, build a collection in that way. Uh, so you'll find that there are some gaps in the collection and I'll call those out in a second. Uh, there's over 17 million volumes in the digital library. Sometimes people have this impression that it's all fiction. That's not true. Uh, there's lots of different kinds of content in there, including a focus on US government documents. So it's a um, very large resource for US, um, US publications. And then also um, you as a University of California audience might be familiar with the Scripps Institute of Oceanography. Um, the entire uh, library there was scanned. So there's sort of sub collections within the larger collection. Um, in terms of the uh, text data in HathiTrust, um, this slide shows um, two uh, ways of thinking about the content. Um, on the left, you can see publication dates for items in HathiTrust. And if you're looking carefully, you can see that it falls off drastically around 1980. And then there are these spikes, uh, one in the um, uh, 20th century and with a little cliff around uh, the uh, copyright cutoff around 1925 now. Um, and then you'll also see that there's a spike for the mid uh, 20th century. Um, th that's because there's many more things published in the 20th century than um, prior to the 20th century, including those government documents that I mentioned. And also um, these spikes have to do with uh, uh, digitization priorities at member libraries. And then in terms of the languages that you'll find, uh, the digital library is uh, primarily in English, uh, the, although the share of English has gone down 
um, from the founding of Hathi Trust in 2008 until 2018, uh, when this uh, image was created for the 10 year anniversary of Hathi Trust. So you can see the share is going down. And you might also notice the sheer scale of um, the many millions of volumes. So we're talking about, um, you know, two million, almost two million items in English when it was um, founded and over eight million items in English now. Um, so that puts some context for those smaller bands that you can see of the um, other top 10 languages. Okay, so in terms of gaps in the collection, HathiTrust mirrors an academic library collection. So if you're thinking about it as a source for data, it's not a great place to go to find things like romance novels, unfortunately. Um, there's also some gaps in areas like speculative fiction, especially those um, written by black female authors. And this is something that HathiTrust recognizes. And we actually have a grant right now from the Mellon Foundation to explore some of these gaps um, and contextualize them um, and think about the ways that they have impacts on data-driven research. Uh, so this is just an example of the kinds of things that you might find in Hathi Trust. So things in the um, American canon like Moby Dick, some lesser known pieces of fiction like the Cubby Bears in California, and then also um, this uh, document from the um, Department of Agriculture. Okay, so that's Hathi Trust. And then sort of sitting underneath the larger umbrella of Hathi Trust is the Hathi Trust Research Center. So the Research Center supports um, uh, digital usage of HathiTrust content, specifically text and data mining. And the Research Center is co-located at Indiana University and the University of Illinois. So it has no physical home, uh, but is um, a virtual center operated by those two universities. The primary entry point for um, the Research Center is this website that we call HTRC Analytics. Uh, you'll need an account in order to use this website and you should use your uh, university email address to sign up. Um, once you're in there, the analytics site, you'll see um, mention of something called a work set. Uh, so this is important to know as you start out on uh, research using the Research Center um, is this idea of the work set. Um, and it's a term that's really only used by HTRC. It's not a term that you could show up at another, say, data science conference and throw around and people would know what you mean. Um, but it's important for how uh, the Research Center um, provides access to the data in the digital library. So we think of uh, work sets as user-created collections of text from the HathiTrust digital library that you plan to analyze in HTRC analytics. Uh, work sets can be stored in HTRC analytics, so you can create one and come back and find it. You can share it with others. Um, that means that you can cite it and others can also cite it. Um, and it's suited for non-consumptive access, and I'm going to talk about what that means in a minute. So the way that you create one of these work sets, which um, is basically the data that you want to analyze in our system, is that you would upload a text file, uh, you could bring in a collection that you've made in HathiTrust Digital Library, or you can use this uh, beta tool that we have uh, that's still a little rough around the edges, but lets you do some sort of new and novel searching that we call Workset Builder 2.0. This is how you're going to load data um, into the analytics site in order to do your analysis. Okay, so what exactly do we mean by a work set? So when you view a work set in HTRC analytics, it's gonna look like something on the left where you can see that there's um, a volume identifier, the title, some metadata. Um, you'll notice though that there is no data that's being exposed. And so I often describe to people that a work set is like a data set, except the data isn't there. So if you uh, were to go and download a data set from somewhere like ICPSR, um, you're gonna get the underlying data. If you download a work set from HTRC, you're just going to get the metadata. Um, and this is because um, of the way that so much of the content in the HathiTrust digital library isn't available for human reading. And so we can't actually let you download those full text files, but we can, what we can let you do is come up with something that looks like a manifest, like what you see on the right, of all of the volumes that you would like to analyze. And then you can throw that list at our systems and uh, let us do the processing for you and spit out your results. All right, so let's say a little more about uh, non-consumptive research. It's a really unattractive term, um, but basically uh, what we use it to mean in HTRC is that it's research in which computational analysis is performed on text, but not research in which a researcher is going to read or display the underlying text data to um, understand the expressive content presented within it. So basically, it's this idea that text and data mining is allow you, allowing you to interact with the ideas that are present in the text, but not so much the um, 
uh, exact way that the ideas are expressed. So it sort of gets at this idea of um, ideas versus expressions in US copyright law. Uh, so some things that the research, centers, um, the research center considers to fall under this umbrella of non-consumptive research are text analysis, text extraction, image analysis, indexing and search. Um, and this is really the uh, foundational um, pillar of the work that happens at the research center and is one of the reasons why as you get started doing um, work with HTRC, you might sort of bang your head against the wall and wonder, well, why can't I see the data in certain applications? And that's because two thirds of the library is under copyright. And so we have to be really careful about how it gets shared and how we share it is through this model of non-consumptive research. So practically what this looks like is that we have three main approaches for providing access to text data from HathiTrust under the non-consumptive research paradigm. There's what we call the partial model, the transformative model, and then the capsule model. And I'll walk us through um, each one of these, uh, starting with the partial model. So for example, we have a tool called um, HT plus bookworm. Uh, you may be familiar with uh, Google Ngrams. Well, um, bookworm is a lot like Google Ngrams. And you could have bookworms for various kinds of text, like um, bookworm is just this visualization platform. There's a bookworm for the newspapers that were digitized at the Library of Congress. But this specific instance of it puts the data from HathiTrust into this visualization, again, that looks a lot like n-grams, and allows you to do a search and track uh, word usage trends over time in the digital library. Uh, what's interesting about this tool versus Google n-grams is that you can facet your search based on some of that library metadata. So some things like genre, subject, um, author, things like that, uh, where it was published, um, et cetera. Unlike Google Ngrams though, you can only search for single words. Um, so it's a unigram search. So I, um, in this example, we have influenza. So you can search for, for influenza, but you couldn't search for um, typhoid fever or something like that because of the way that the underlying data is structured. Uh, but you'll notice that none of the data is being exposed here. The other example that we have of a, um, the, this partial model for the non-consumptive access are the HTRC algorithms. So these are off the shelf algorithms that are accessible through HTRC analytics. Um, they're made for analyzing HathiTrust data only. Um, so you might be familiar with other sort of off the shelf tools for doing text, um, text analysis like uh, Voyant, uh, where you, uh, you bring your own data to the tool. Um, in this case, uh, you have the tool and it's fetching the data for you. Uh, so you can run it, we say, against the work set. So you feed in your work set. You say, I want to run this algorithm with this work set, and it will spit out the results that, um, that are generated through the algorithm. And it can do, um, our algorithms can do a few different kinds of analysis. So um, one of the most basic ones is just to generate a token count and word cloud. So uh, which words occur most frequently in your work set and how many times do they occur? Um, it can also help you do things like visualize themes. So there's a topic modeling algorithm. And then also list the names of people, places, organizations, and dates, or named entity recognition. Uh, so the results that you see on this slide, this output um, screenshot, are from the named entity recognition algorithm. Um, and this, um, actually, I don't even remember what works that we were running this against. Um, it looks like some kind of uh, government document, though. OK. Uh, then we move on to the transformative model uh, for non-consumptive research. So uh, this is the main way that HTRC provides access to um, a bulk download of um, data drawn from the digital library collection. So for some researchers, um, those off-the-shelf algorithms are not going to be quite what they want to do. They need to have more flexibility. They want to be able to interact with the data on their own machines. And that's what the um, extracted features files can really help you do. So um, these features files are an open data set in JSON format of nearly every volume in the HathiTrust digital library. So um, there's one file for one volume. Uh, so that means that this data set includes over 17 million, vo um, 17 million files. So you generally don't download the whole thing because it's um, several terabytes and you probably aren't going to want to work with all that data, although some people do. Um, and the files include metadata about the volume that's being described in the file. Um, so that's bibliographic metadata like uh, who wrote it, where it was published, the year that it was published. And then um, 
Beyond that, you get into the meat of the file, which is um, broken out into a structured format for every page in that volume, which words appear on the page and how many times do they appear. Um, and those uh, words are uh, tagged with part of speech. So it will disambiguate rows, the, um, the name from rows, the flower from um, rows, the verb. And so that helps you to do a little bit more of precise counting. So you can do all kinds of research once you have these tokens and token counts, um, including things like topic modeling or other kinds of text analysis that require um, like a bag of words um, approach where you just need to know which words were there and how many times they appeared. Um, for some researchers though, that's not quite cutting it and they really need to have even more flexibility and even more um, uh, ability to work with the text as it appeared on the page. And for those researchers, we steer them to the HTRC data capsule environment. Um, so I am sort of a visual person. When I think data capsule, I have this idea of what this infrastructure is going to look like. And I'm sort of like an astronaut going off to space. Uh, but the data capsules are actually much less interface heavy than that. Um, basically all they are are secure virtual machines that you can log into from within the HTRC analytics site. And um, it, you open it up and it looks like the desktop of a computer running um, Ubuntu. So this is an Ubuntu desktop that you'll see in the screenshot. Um, and you can interact with the capsule as if it were your own machine. You can download data, you can analyze the data. Um, they're not a reading app though. So um, we make that uh, distinction. They're not there for you to sit and do your reading. Uh, we trust the researcher to use them for text and data mining. Um, and then when you're ready to go on your merry way, once you have your results, uh, your results go through a human review process and someone opens the files and confirms that um, you're not exporting full text, images of the full text, or anything that could be reconstituted into a substantial portion of the full text. Um, as researchers from the University of California, you do have access in a data capsule to um, anything that's in the HathiTrust digital library, both um, uh, that which is in copyright or out of copyright. Um, and that's a, a, a benefit that we extend to members of HathiTrust and the University of California is a member of HathiTrust. Uh, I um, should mention that um, the algorithms also have the ability to analyze anything that's in the digital library. It's just that with the data capsules, we make that distinction between members and non-members because our resources are limited. So that's a benefit we extend to the membership. Okay, so we might have got through, gone through that run through and you're thinking like, yeah, none of these sound great to me. Um, there's some other ways that you can interact with data from HathiTrust. Um, the first is a, uh, the HathiTrust data API. Um, so sort of uh, turning our gaze away from the infrastructure built by the research center and back towards um, work that happens at HathiTrust, which really makes no difference to you, but it makes a difference to us um, as people who uh, work with the research center, work with HathiTrust. Um, there is this data API that um, the team at Michigan manages. Um, and the data API allows you to download up to 10,000 public domain volumes from the HathiTrust Digital Library. So you are limited in the fact that you can only grab 10,000 volumes, but that's still quite a bit of text. One other limitation here though, is that you can only get text that was not digitized by Google. So I've sort of steered away from this um, hot point in dealing with text from HathiTrust uh, because the research center doesn't make a distinction between um, who digitized the text. Uh, but once you start working with um, the data from HathiTrust with HathiTrust, then there's a distinction that comes into play. So the data API, public domain volumes up to 10,000 not digitized by Google. So if you just need a bunch of public domain text to do some, um, some work, then that could be a great option for you. The other option you have is to do a custom data request. And the University of California has signed an additional agreement with Google, which allows researchers on any of the University of California campuses to download up to the entire public domain text data set from HathiTrust. Um, I can't remember exactly how big um, the data set is. I looked at it recently. I think it's something like 300 gigs. Um, so you're probably not gonna download the whole thing, uh, but you can download a subset. Again, these are just public domain texts, but you can work with them on your own uh, computer and you don't have to work with them um, within the confines of some of the research center systems. Um, so this is another great option if you're uh, not so interested in working with materials from um, 1925 on. Okay, so this table is the table from hell, but it um, uh, synthesizes these access options that you have. 
so uh, uh, and this is this table is available on um, in some of the HTRC documentation. Uh, but as you're choosing uh, your path for how you want to interact with this data, you'll sort of have to think through um, uh, this sort of flow chart, which is, do I need access to the full text or not? Will the extracted features be good enough? Um, do I need public domain or in copyright data, um, et cetera, et cetera? How much flexibility do I need for the analysis or how much programming experience do I have? And that might set you on a direction for which path you're going to choose. Okay, so I'll close with one um, more example that's from a University of California researcher. Um, so um, that researcher, David Bamman, who sort of sandwiched in the middle of the um, authors list, worked with Ted Underwood and Sabrina Lee, who are at the University of Illinois, uh, to build on some earlier work that Ted Underwood had done to explore um, first genre in the HathiTrust Digital Library, and then looking at um, gender in a subset of those volumes that he identified as being fiction. Um, so they wanted to look and see how the significance of gender had changed in fiction over time. Um, they used a, um, a little program called Book NLP to do their analysis inside a data capsule. Um, and what they found interestingly is that the number of female characters and female authors declined by half between 1850 and 1950, which is sort of a surprise. Um, and also that the depictions of men and women in fiction have become less distinct over time. Uh, one thing they theorize about why the number of um, female characters and authors declined, um, they put forth a few ideas. Some of them have to do with um, the professionalization of writing um, and also that female writers tend to write about both men and women, whereas um, they posit that male writers tend to write mostly about uh, men. Okay, so if you um, are interested in doing work with the Research Center, we do have a program called Advanced Collaborative Support. Uh, so there are some scholars who um, sort of have really big ideas and they uh, need support in order to carry those out. Uh, that's what the ACS program is for. So if one of our tools is not going to help you get where you need to go, um, then you can apply on a, a roughly annual basis um, to get um, support for your text and data mining project. And these are truly collaborative programs. Um, so you are hooked up with a little project manager from our team. Um, they make sure that your project is moving along over the course of six months to a year. Um, and then uh, finally, I'll just leave it by pointing out that we have a user group. Uh, you can subscribe to our email list. Uh, we have speakers twice a year. If you wanna learn more about uh, um, concrete implementations of what people have been doing with uh, data from uh, HathiTrust or tools from HTRC. And then also we have a workshop program that's currently virtual. Uh, we're about to kick off our spring, spring program and all of those workshops are full, but we're planning to do them um, again, at least in the fall and then maybe with a special series over the summer. Okay, so that's all I have. And I left just a few minutes at the end for questions. Um, and I don't know, Stephanie, if you want to moderate. Yeah, so there is a question. First of all, thank you. Um, it's such a great resource for the UC community. I've poked around on it a bit and it's it's super fun to see what's in there, especially um, I'm at UC San Diego. So the collection from Scripps is really interesting to poke through. Um, so we do have a question about the um, the public domain data set. So who should a researcher contact to get access to those kind of public domain data set downloads? Yeah, so there is a, a web page that's um, hathitrust.org forward slash data sets. And that uh, web page describes the process for getting access to those materials. Um, and what you'll do is you'll send an email to um, feedback at issues.hathitrust.org. And that's outlined on the web page Stephanie just put in chat. And that will, um, once you do that, you provide us some information about your intended use, and then we set you up to uh, download the data. Great. Um, if anyone else has questions, feel free to um, throw them in the chat. Um, if not, I mean, um, I'd be interested to know um, how often you get people from the UC system doing that kind of collaborative research or if it's an area where maybe we could start doing a little bit more. Yeah, so um, uh, David Bamman, who I mentioned is having worked on that last example, he was an ACS awardee from a few years ago to maybe two rounds ago. And David did some work where they were analyzing page images. So that's something that you can on special basis get access to. So not just the text, but the page images. And they were looking at whether you could, like how publishing had changed over time 
based on how pages were laid out. Um, and I think that was the last University of California researcher. So we would love to see another uh, UC person or team of people apply um, to the program. Uh, we are doing this special round now that I sort of alluded to that's funded by the Mellon Foundation. Uh, so those projects will last at least another year. Uh, so we won't do another call for proposals probably until 2022. Good to know. Good to yes, know. Yes, you have time to think <laughs> of an idea. Yeah. Yes. Um, so yes, any researchers that are interested, um, now is clearly the time to put in a proposal. So that puts us right at about 1230. Um, again, if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to your library on your campus. So um, I'm the data librarian at UC San Diego. I have equivalents at all the other UC campuses and feel free to either reach out directly to HTRC if you know exactly what you're looking for or if you're interested in more information, please don't hesitate to reach out to your library and your librarians and we'd be more than happy to talk with you a little bit more about some of the really cool things um, that you can do with HTRC, especially for the copyrighted material that can be a real pain otherwise. So it's a really good resource for a variety of collections, but especially for copyright information. Um, so thank you, Eleanor, so much. And um, again, this is our first day of the UC Love Data Week, so I hope people are planning to attend other events. And with that, we're going to go ahead and um, stop the webinar. So thank you, everyone. Thank you.